party. Okay. But here's the question. If I, had his, if I had his raw athletic ability, would I have made the same choices that he's made in order to get him where he is today? Or any person for that matter. If there's anyone that you look at and you think to yourself, oh, if I only had all of their skill, oh, if I only had all of their intelligence, oh, if I only all had their abilities, I could be just like them. Could you? Would you be just like them? We'll never know. So don't waste time worrying about it. It's great to meet other people and find out some of the things that they've done that have led them down the path of success. If it's something that's similar to what you want to do, by all means, talk to them, learn from them, get mentored by them. But you still are going to have to remember that you are going to have to make the choices you need to make in order to sometimes go in the exact same spot. If you don't have control over something, you've got to learn to let it go. If you can't let it go, if you don't want to let it go, if you will not let it go, then you have to do something about it. And you can do something about it through your power of choice. Now, I told you at the very, very beginning, I was here to do two things. Number one, I was here to make you laugh. Number two, I was here to make you think. I'm not naive. I'm not here to change your lives instantly. You're not going to see me afterwards and be like, Chudson, you have exercised my demon. My mind is clean. Hallelujah. <laughs> and if you do, I'm running away. <laughs> My job is just plant seeds, get you to think about things. So as you're going through the study of competition, if you're looking at your life as a competition with yourself, to better yourself, to, you know, or even if you're looking at life as a competition to better other people around you, to rise higher than other people have in your life, maybe, just maybe, you'll start to think about what choices do I need to make in order to quote-unquote win that particular competition. Competition exists all around us, every single day. I've always been a competitive person. I used to cheat when I was little all the time because I hated losing. Like you would play like wiffle ball games in your backyard and you know, someone would throw the wiffle ball at you and it would hit you, but you'd be like, it didn't, it hit my, it hit my shirt, I'm totally safe, I'm okay. Or you used to do the whole do-over thing all the time. You'd be playing basketball and you would miss a shot and you'd be like, I was fouled. And then you're like, no, you were well, we'll do over. Let's do it over. Let's just do it over, okay? We'll do it over, okay? So I've always been a competitive person. Competition exists in life. But the truth of the matter is, most of the things that we feel competitive about it don't matter in the long run. The true, really only competition we have in life is with ourselves. And if we are getting better than we were the day before, if we are moving forward towards the goals that we want to achieve, if we're making the choices that we need to, if we're letting go of the things we don't have control over and focusing in on the things that we do. Now, if you remember anything I want to talk about, I want you to remember the idea that life has changed. Because okay? I believe that kind of starts off this whole understanding. You have to recognize that the world's always changing. You have to understand things are going to change. And I was sitting around with my friends trying to figure out what could I do to really drive home the idea that life has changed. And my friends and I, we talk about all sorts of things that have changed growing up. Talk about games, talk about board games like Hungry Hungry Hippo, which is a great game. But you only play for one second because you always broke it. Like, here you go, bang, broke. <laughs> then you had the game without every child how to be sarcastic. Sarcasm is learned at a very young age through a game called Sorry. <laughs> and if you ever played Sorry, you might have got all these pieces, you moved around the board, and if you ever landed on your opponent's piece, they had to go back to their beginning. You were supposed to be like, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and he was like, ha ha, sorry! <laughs> and thus sarcasm is born. So I was sitting there with my friends, and one of my friends just goes, Hey, what's that quote that you use all the time? Because I have a quote that I use a lot, and it simply says this. It says, life isn't always the part we'd hoped for, but while we are here, we might as well dance. And basically what it means is life isn't perfect, no one's life is. But that doesn't mean you can't enjoy life as much as possible, okay, by choosing, metaphorically speaking, to dance. And then one of my friends just goes, hey, you know it's changed a lot over the years. They're like, dancing has changed a lot over the years. Like if you could do a little dance routine in the last 50 years of dance, that'd be hysterical. Well, I'm like, you're right, it would, but there's a problem. I'm like, what? I'm like, I can't dance. I'm like, oh, that's all right. You can't sing either. I never stopped you before. <laughs> Which is true. But I am the best singer in my car. It's all that matters. <laughs> Raise your hand if you like to bell out when no one else is around. Oh, yeah, my peeps, my peeps. <laughs> well, you know what else I've learned? I thought I was the only one who does this, and I feel so much relief knowing that I'm not. But you're by yourself. You're in your car, your office, house, apartment, somewhere. No one else is around. You're listening to some music, singing along having a good time, and a song comes on, okay? Now, you love this song. I mean, you love this song. There is a note within that song 
that you will never be able to hit. So you crank the volume.